Cat Designs and thank you so much for joining me today for the episode one of my new podcast My Handmade Life. So you may be wondering what we're going to talk about on my podcast. Well of course it's going to be about knitting but as you've guessed probably from the name there's going to be more since primarily I'm a knitwear designer and instructor and you can find my patterns on Ravelry I will put the link below. We're going to talk a lot about knitting. So it's going to be about knitting, wool, yarn, probably sheep because they're cute and the tools that we need for it. I'm going to do some tutorials on different techniques and you'll get some glimpses behind the scenes of what a knitwear designer does. You'll probably see patterns that are in the works. I will share some FOs, some finished objects with you. I will share some works in progress, some yarn that I'm excited about. I chose the name My Handmade Life because for as long as I remember, I've been a maker. I've always made things with my hands. I love to create different things and um, I, I'm an artist, I'm a maker, I'm a knitwear designer and I'm an instructor. So I think this all sort of ties together into what I'm doing here. I used to paint a lot. Watercolor primarily was my medium, um, gouache as well. Um, I draw and sketch. Sadly, I haven't had that much time for this lately because my hands have been occupied knitting and sewing and doing other things. So I'm going to be talking some about the other creative outlets that I have in my life beyond the, beyond the knitting. I embroider, I spin, I started to weave because, you know, I needed another hobby, clearly. Um, I used to have a cooking block years and years ago that I'm thinking I might resurrect just so that you guys have access to the recipes. So I may throw I may throw in a recipe every once in a while. And I'm actually in the process of creating a more sustainable handmade wardrobe for myself. And this is one of the shirts that I sewed in the last year. This is the Cheyenne tunic from Hey June Handmade. I will put a link to that pattern down there as well. But it's a tunic length shirt, it's a linen tunic. I made it out of a linen fabric and I love it. And I'm in the process of creating more clothing with my own hands. There's also gonna be nature in this podcast because I love, love, love being outside. I'm happiest outside. I hike, we camp, we kayak, so, and I have a little garden. So we're definitely going to see some of that. You might go on little hikes with me virtually through our podcast. I hope you will enjoy it. And just to sum it up, basically the podcast is going to be about you getting a glimpse into my life here in Pennsylvania with my hubby, the cats, and a lot of knitting. I'm sitting here outside on this nice afternoon by my local little creek in a park and um, so far nobody has interrupted me while I'm sitting here with a selfie stick talking to myself and I want to just show you a little bit of where I'm sitting right now because you can probably hear the creek in the background and it's one of my fav favorite hidden little spots it's like just five minutes from my house and um, it's nice to come here for just five, 10 minutes at the end of the day to decompress and just listen to the creek. So I will turn around so you can see that. So the creek is over there. And that in the background there is an old, it's a museum now, but it used to be an old iron furnace, I guess is what it's called. So a lot of the rocks around here, like where I'm sitting are actually remnants from when they used to get the iron ore out of the rock and then they would put the melty hot sludge onto a pile over there and over time it's eroded and the creek has taken it down here so i'm going to show you some of the pieces that are just sitting around here they look like molten glass or lava some of them have like these bubbles in them and stuff so um
So we're just taking a walk here down the path by my local creek because I'm trying to scope out locations for future photo shoots for a couple of patterns that I have coming up. I don't think this one is going to work for Quintaras just because there's not that much space, but for smaller things this will be perfect. So just bear with me as we walk and climb over trees and things. It's a really, really pretty spot because besides the creek, now in the spring there are lots of little wildflowers. I actually also chased off a couple of deer, sadly. Off to the left here, they ran off as they heard me coming. I was trying to go really quietly, but it's a bit hard with all the leaves on the ground and, you know. And look, the flowers. So we got these guys. And over here, of course. The wild blue hyacinths. There's a whole field on the other side of the creek of those, but they're literally everywhere. So. Hi guys, it's Simone and I just want to tell you a little bit about my new shawl, Quintaras, and here you can see it. So first of all, it has tassels. I think tassels make pretty much everything better, so I added three to this shawl, three pretty big ones. And the way I made them, in the instructions it tells you to use a piece of cardboard, but if you have one of these, You can actually wrap it around long ways to make this tassel. You just need to trim it a little bit afterwards. Also, because there's tension on it, it actually makes about that length tassel. If you make it this way, it's going to be really short and probably would work better for a fingering weight shawl than for this one. So I suggest using that or a piece that's about five and a half inches of sturdy cardboard. But the check, the gauge check from Susan Bates works really well. So, I added three tassels. You, of course, can add less or more if you like. I made them in two colors. You have, again, a choice of how to make them. Now, let's look at the shawl. The pattern, the pattern name, Gintaras, means amber in Lithuanian. My father grew up in Lithuania, and um, he grew up on a farm outside of Klaipeda, which is the big port city in Lithuania and um, he gave me this piece of amber and I'll put it in the video probably at the end so you can see it that he had found on the Baltic Sea when he was a teenager or something when he was younger anyway and um, must have kept it all these years and then eventually it came to me it's a piece of raw amber it's not polished or anything but it's a nice chunk and it means a lot to me to have it because clearly it was something that he's treasured for a long time when he had to flee Lithuania to um, escape communism and um, him and his mom fled to Germany at the time and um, hello cat I'm doing a video you can't help me no hang on a second sorry about that guys that was my cat Shamu who wanted to go outside and she likes to cry when she does that and so I had to quickly interrupt and let her out so she doesn't disturb us anymore. So the shawl is called Gintaras, which means amber in Lithuanian. And it was inspired by this piece of raw amber that my father gave me um, that I still have. I'm not sure if I want to eventually get it polished, maybe make some jewelry out of it, or if I just want to keep it the way it is because it is really cool. And I will put the picture at the end. The other things, the other features in the pattern, I will show you right now. So it ends with this lovely, lovely mosaic slip stitch pattern this is more of like an advanced mosaic i want to call it it's not like it's harder but 
in a traditional mosaic pattern, you wouldn't knit and purl in one row. You would do all of the same. You would either do it all in garter or all in stockinette stitch. And so here we actually have some garter broken up with stockinette stitch in between. So it works similar to just regular mosaic knitting, but it's a bit more it involves a bit more thinking or looking at the chart versus just cruising ahead. But it adds this lovely, lovely textural element to it. So the patterns that I used for the shawl, let's just unfold this so you can see. So it's a triangular shawl. It starts on the top edge up here. And since it's big, I'll show you half of it so we can look at it as we go. So it starts up here. You're going back and forth, you're knitting downwards into um, an open triangle shape. The first pattern we have here is a Vickel braid, which is a Baltic braid that runs laterally across your knitting. So it works all the way across from where you started. It goes all the way across the row. Also, there's another textural element in this shawl, which is like a mini cable going down the spine of it, which also adds a little bit of texture. And these first two patterns here, I mean, besides that, the one color and the two color Vickle braid are obviously from the Baltic region of the world. And therefore, I wanted to have them in my pattern here. They also have another function here. Um, the inspiration behind the shawl, again, is some of the stories my dad told me of growing up where he did. And um, one of the stories he told me is how in the winter or in the fall, I guess I should say, people would cut pieces of peat out of the moors, just like in Scotland and in the northern parts of the UK, people would cut these pieces of turf, these pieces of peat out of the moor to dry so that in the winter you could have a fire because there's not a whole lot of trees on moors, but the, the turf burns pretty well. So these pieces are meant to represent those square pieces of turf that are cut out, square, pe square pieces of peat that are cut out of the moors and then dry it for fire, for um, heat in the winter, for fuel. Sorry, that's what I wanted to say, fuel. Here we have a two-color Vickle braid. You may have heard this called a Vickle braid because in America we like to call all the I's, I's, well, E, I, however you want to say that. And then here we get to our first mosaic type pattern. A lot of the architecture in uh, Klepeda and in that region used to be what in German is called Fachwerkhaus, which is a style of construction where you have exposed wooden beams that are showing through or that are made to show on the outside of the house. So the structure and the support system of the house is not just on the inside of the walls, but you can actually, you can also see it on the outside of the house. And these squares remind me of that. So I used that pattern here and then the pattern we have at the very edge of the shawl is again a expanded version of that. It's mirroring that but it's sort of slightly altered and adds a little bit more interest. And then we finish off our shawl with a Pferdezügel bind off which is a very simple two stitch I cord for most Americans and then of course the tassels. So that my friends, concludes my little spiel about Gintaras, and I hope you will enjoy knitting it. I can't wait to see what colors you're going to pick. It is one of my favorite, favorite shawls. Sadly, it's a bit warm right now for me to wear it, but it's going to go into the 30s overnight. So I think tomorrow morning I will get to wear it again. So I'm super excited about that. I hope you enjoy it as much as me, and um, I will talk about some more knitting next time. Hi, everyone. It's Simone. I just got done with our photo shoot for my new shawl in Taurus. So I just got done with the photo shoot for the newest shawl, which I will feature in this video and which will be out by then because it's coming out tomorrow. And I doubt I get to edit all this video footage by then. But of course it is one of the warmest days this spring yet and it's a really warm shawl. So it was quite warming to be wearing it out in nature. <laughs> but we have gotten some really, really great photos. So I'm excited to share those with you and I look forward to seeing what colors you may want to pick for your shawl. It uses two colors and it uses a bunch of um, 
textural stitches and techniques and it uses mosaic knitting and I will also do a little tutorial on just the basics of mosaic knitting so you can get started on that so yes while I was taking the pictures I found out I found out that there's an owl's nest over in one of those pine trees so I will have to come back and um, hopefully see the owls at some point the young man didn't know what kind of owl it was he thought maybe it was a great horned owl but I can't really be sure so I will have to investigate some more but how cool is that you know I mean I have cats obviously owl cat designs comes from that name but the owl is a very special animal to me as well and so I would love to I love to see them whenever I do I've seen a great horned owl a couple times like in the early early morning not in this park but I've never come here in the early morning so maybe I should try that because I think they're obviously owls are kind of nocturnal they're usually not just flitting about during the day friends this is Simone with Alcat Designs and today our video is going to teach us how to do basic mosaic knitting on this swatch here I'm going to show you how to do mosaic knitting on a stockinette background and I'm using this lovely yarn from Brown Sheep Company in Nebraska it's called Prairie Spun DK this is also what my new shawl Gintaras is made from and if you haven't had a chance to try it I highly recommend it it is super nice to work with it's a three ply yarn it is squishy it's non super wash so it blooms nicely when you block it and um, which makes really really fantastic tassels just so you know and um, it is soft it's squishy and it has still a little bit of that natural feel versus some of the super wash yarns that can be rather slick this one holds nicely holds its shape nicely so I recommend it I'm using half and half for this swatch and for the shawl and a color called honeycomb and I will show you the shawl in a little bit but Prairie Spun DK is a three ply yarn and it is 256 yards per 100 grams and these are such as some notes that I have on here from how many I'm not sure I thought it was weight but I think it may be something else I'm gonna cut this out of the video <laughs> so here um, is the little label for it and let's get started in mosaic knitting you will always work two rows in one color and then two rows in another color while strategically slipping stitches one thing you want to make sure is that you're not pulling the yarn too tight as you're slipping stitches and as you can see here on my second row with the white in my zeal to make this swatch go really really fast I didn't pay attention and I pulled it a little tight so you can barely see that second row of stitches first I've already gone ahead and worked two rows with a lighter color and I'm now getting to my first row where we're slipping stitches I'm gonna work across my three stitch garter edge I like to make my swatches like this because it keeps them lying flat when you show something and when you measure the, the gauge it's also super helpful to do that so for this pattern I need to slip one stitch and then knit three and it works the same if you're a thrower versus if you're a picker I grew up in Switzerland and so I learned to knit this way and I can't really do it any other way three slip one but if you had the yarn over here you would do the same thing you would just knit two three and then slip one So as you can see, the pattern is already starting to form. I'm going to finish the row and then I'm going to come back and show you what we're doing on the pearl side of our stockinette swatch. So on the back side of our swatch, we're going to work pearl stitches in order to get the stockinette fabric, right? So I already worked the three stitch garter edge and now I'm going to purl the next three stitches and in, um, in mosaic knitting two rows are always worked with the same color and on the back row on the return row you're going to knit or purl the same stitches that are already worked in that yarn so 
in essence, you don't really need to look at the chart for the second row because you can see here that I have one, two, three stitches in the working yarn and then one that I slipped. So that's the same thing that I'm going to do on this row as what I did on the first row, on the right side row. So I'm going to purl three stitches. One, two, three. I'm going to slip one and leave the yarn in the front of the work, which is now the wrong side. I'm not going to move it anywhere. I'm going to just leave it here, slip that stitch, and then go back to purling. One, two, three. Slip. One, two, three. Again, making sure that you don't end up with the yarn over here. If you do that, it's going to cross over your pattern on the right side, and it's going to obscure this nice slip stitch row that you did. So you want to make sure that you leave it on the wrong side where it is for purling, slip, and then purl across these other stitches. Again, slip one, purl, slip, purl, oops. And then here I'm getting to my garter edge. And here we are. So now the next row is going to be worked in the white. That's that center row. The second two rows of the pattern are going to be worked in the white yarn again. And again, I'm going to work the three stitches on the end for my garter edge. And then this row of the pattern requires you to knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one all the way across. So the one that I'm, the first one I'm knitting is already white because I've slipped that one up. Then I'm slipping one of the honeycomb colored stitches and I'm knitting the center one. Slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, wait, slip. And you're always slipping as if to purl because you're just, in essence, you're just transferring those stitches. You're almost like putting them on hold to be worked later. So you're not you're not turning them around or anything like when you're doing a decrease, you're just putting them aside. So this is what it looks like at this point and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the other side. So we finished the right side and I'm going to turn over. I'm going to go and work the three stitch garter edge and now again I'm going to have to purl across and I'm going to purl the same stitches that I knit on the row before. So I'm going to purl only the white ones, slipping the dark ones in between. Slip one, purl one. Slip one, purl one. Slip one, purl one. Slip one, purl one. And since I really can't purl when I throw, I can show you the slipping part. You'd have to make sure your yarn stays over here. And then I never know which way to wrap the yarn when... Is it this way? Maybe it is. Like that, I think. <laughs> You're going to laugh at me. But, um... So this is how you would do it if you're throwing, I guess. But um, it basically works the same way. You want to keep the yarn that you're slipping, that the stitches that you're slipping, you want to keep clear of the yarn. So you want to make sure that your yarn is always staying to the wrong side of the work, to the private side of the work, which means that when you're working across a purl row or a back row, you're going to have to keep it in front. which luckily when you're doing purl stitches, it already is there. You don't have to worry about it, move it around or anything like that. And here we are. We just did that part of the pattern. And now comes another row with slip one, knit three in the honey color, honeycomb color. Let's get some yarn over here. Here is what it looks like after you've worked across that next right side row with the honeycomb yarn. Again, it's slip one, knit three. And here I've worked across the wrong side row. So now I have my two rows of honeycomb and I'm going to follow it up with these two rows of just plain stockinette in the half and half in the white color. 
And here's what it all looks like when you're done with your two rows of white. So if I wanted to keep going with this pattern, I would now work two rows in the honeycomb. And then two rows in the white and then start with the same slipping pattern again that we just did. This concludes mosaic knitting, stuck in that background, and I hope you join me next time. Thank you so, so much for joining me today and for tuning in. And please don't forget to like this podcast, subscribe below and tell all your friends about it. And I can't wait to have you join me next time for more of my adventures. Thank you so much. And I hope, um, since primarily, prim, since primarily I'm a knitwear. Hi guys, I have a lot of freckles. I do. My hand made my hand made life. <sighs> I I wait. I said embroidered, spin, weave. I cook a lot. I talk.